Okay, so uh, hi, my name is uh, my name is Ben Gillis. Um, um, I work for I work for a company called Digital Science. Um, that's me. Um, primarily, I do front end JavaScript development um, in Ember and D3. Um, we have a large amount of data, which slows down our client a lot. Um, hence the talk today. Um, so. The basic problem is that Ember's designed for writing large scale apps um, and it has sort of various patterns and conventions and sort of built in methods and utilities and whatever that make that make doing that fairly easy but it's sort of more difficult when it comes to the browser because that's a sort of hard limit and you can't really get past it. So if you've got a really large scale app with a lot of data, then um, at least without without threading, your basic options are to just hunt and do all of it on the server side, um, which which makes sense for some things, but sort of really sucks for um, for other things. Um, so the basic issue is that um, is that brow um, each browser tab runs in a single thread. Um, so this means that everything, everything runs in a thread. The job, um, if you have some JavaScript code that's running, it runs from the start right through to the end without stopping. Um, it then sits and waits for events to happen, and when the events happen, it then re runs the relevant code again straight through from the start to the end without stopping. Um, which means that if you have a lot of data or you're doing something um, complicated. Um, and time consuming and expensive, like sorting a really large list, um, then that takes a long time and it locks up the whole browser thread, um, it locks up the whole browser thread, it locks up the UI. Um, so just take a brief interlude, does anybody <coughs> not know what threads are? Cool, we can skip. <laughs> so, so here's a here's a simple example of what I'm talking about. We've got a very um, basic Ember app here. Um, essentially, we've got um, one number. It's not a particularly big number, but we're calculating the forty-first Fibonacci number. Um, there's like a animated spinner. There just to show what's going on with the browser and um, while we do that and we also wait for three seconds um, just to give it time to get started um, so if we run that you can see it's running and then after three seconds it pauses while it's calculating um, so this is the basic problem that we have so threading generally solves that problem. Um, although it, it itself brings a lot of other problems, so mostly around sharing data. Um, there are various solutions that different languages implement to solve this, so things like STM and Clojure. Uh, the actor stuff in Erlang, the like Go routines and whatever, but basically they all revolve around not sharing any data between threads. So enter web workers in the browser. Um, web workers are the browser version of threads. They have um, they have an API that's really similar to post message, um, which is which which is great because it's sort of easy to use, but it sort of sucks because it doesn't really work very well with um, Ember apps. Um, web workers also don't share any data, which also sort of sucks, um, mostly, uh, mostly because you have to serialize all your JavaScript objects into plain JavaScript objects, which Ember objects sort of aren't. Um, which makes everything a lot trickier um, and there's no sort of code sharing um, so you don't get to use Ember inside your threads either which is also kind of awkward um, 
but it's not sort of a massive problem. Um, so the question is when should you do that? So if you have like a really large amount of data, um, in, in our app we're doing, um, we're sort of searching, um, sort of searching on key presses for sort of, bet um, between sort of maybe 15,000 or so records, which in the grand scheme of things isn't that many, but in the context of our Ember app sort of takes a bit too long. Um, we, ca uh, we calculate sort of collaboration um, data, which again sort of takes a bit too long, and we calculate trends between up to sort of 11,000 different records, which are which are sort of per year and then need sort of splitting out into sort of 40,000 records and then sort of summing up and all this sort of thing. So it just sort of takes, a, it just sort of takes too long. So when you've optimized it already um, and it still takes too long, that's sort of when you use, when you might switch to something like web workers. Uh, I think I went over that. So parallel JS is something that came out not that long ago. Um, essentially, it's a wrapper around the web worker API. Um, it let um, basically using promises, and it lets you uh, just pass in raw functions, which um, which it then injects into the web worker using um, function dot prototype dot to string um, to turn it into a string. Um, that obviously means that you lose your scope, but it's a web worker anyway, so you do that anyway, uh, which isn't a huge issue. Um, it sort of looks like this. Um, so here we've got we've got essentially the same thing. Um, this time we're summing um, three um, Fibonacci numbers um, because we're now using threads, and we can. Um, and this is the sort of parallel JS um, API. Um, you start off, you create a new worker, passing in the data that you want to operate on. So in the real world, this would be sort of a really large list of something. Um, you can map over that list to do something with it. You can reduce it to do something else with it. Um, it's all promises, so you get the result back afterwards um, and then we can see it running in a thread um, and we can see that the GIF keeps going around um, which means that it's not locking up our browser UI um, so, so it still takes time to do but it takes maybe a bit less time to do and it's sort of comfortable because it doesn't interrupt anyone's workflow um, so, so Ember Parallel is a small wrapper over the top of that um, to make it play nicely with Ember. Um, essentially, there's three different things. Um, the first thing is some code to turn anything into a plain JavaScript object that can then be passed through to a web worker. Uh, the next part is um, a sort of computer property, but one that works with promises, um, sort of like um, sort of like the model function in a router. If you return promise from that, it just sort of turns into the correct property. Um, it's sort of like that, but that's basically used for the wrapper around parallel JS. Um, these are the three basic functions within Parallel.js and um, they all work like computed properties which makes everything easy and means you can use them um, in different places um, in whether like however you want basically um, so to start off we can we can tidy up the code a bit using these computed promises um, from what it was before it's effectively the same but we now don't have a then block um, we just return the promise directly um, and then fib total here just becomes the value 
um, we can also uh, we can also pass in like an initial value as well in case you want to do anything with that. Um, so you can see the initial value being populated and then when it eventually finishes it just sort of switches over to the right value which is kind of cool. Um, so the, the, um, the actual syntax itself um, works pretty much how you'd expect <laughs> with computer properties. Um, spawn function um, takes a list of dependencies, function, and an initial value. Um, it's probably worth noting that inside this function, um, as with the other functions, um, you can't reference anything outside of it, like at all. Um, so, yeah, everything you do has to be inside the function. Um, so here we're sorting um, like an imaginary list of thousands of elements without worrying about it. Um, same thing with map, we can do, and we can map over a theoretically really large list of stuff without worrying about it. Um, thing worth mentioning here um, is that we name the function, um, we have to name the function before we can do things like recursion with it. Um, that's again a sort of limitation of web workers and the parallel JS library. Um, reduce is the same sort of thing. Um, it works slightly differently to the um, the standard JavaScript reduce function um, in that it gets an array of two elements. The first being one element from your initial array, and the second being a different element from your initial array. Um, the difference being that after a while, um, first element may be uh, uh, may have already been reduced. So um, here we check if it's an array, uh, if the first element's an array before operating on it, and we do different things depending on that. Um, so that's the that's the basic API. Um, Again, the limitations, there's no code sharing at the moment. Um, yeah, um, it uses, um, there's, um, as far as JSON serialization goes, um, there's, there's a very sort of rough to JSON method um, that um, that attempts to turn anything you pack, um, that attempts to turn anything into a JSON object. Um, but things like Ember Model and Ember Data provide their own to JSON method, which works a lot better for their particular uh, use cases. So the idea is that um, those just sort of work because it because Ember and conventions and what have you. Um, so we can then rewrite our earlier example again. Um, and we can, so, um, and so we've now split out the map and reduce portion. Um, and the benefit of doing this is that we then effectively cache the Fibonacci numbers. Um, the reduce function here is obviously uh, pointlessly simplistic, but um, imagine, imagine if it did something with <coughs> some other property um, as a dependency of well that took maybe a bit more time. Um, the benefit of splitting it out here is then that uh, the FIBS is only calculated once and is then cached so you don't have to spend all the time calculating it every single time, which is, which is cool because that's how computer properties work. Um, so it runs as we expect. Um, does effectively the same thing. Um, so that's basically it. That's the library. It's a really small library. It serves a very specific function. Um, hopefully you can use it in other ways um, for whatever is useful if you're working with large amounts of data. Um, it's 
still pretty early. I wrote it like last week maybe, or a couple of weeks ago or something, so I've not worked on it that much. Um, so you know, the next steps, um, like more helper functions, like map and reduce a call, but we can probably add some extra useful ones. Um, and uh, Parallel.js does allow code sharing of a form. Um, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be code sharing in the form of load the whole of your Ember app into a web worker because that's not how web workers work. Um, but you would be able to do something like this. So that's how I that's well roughly what I thought of um, earlier today when I wrote it out for um, something that will hopefully allow you to do some sort of code sharing. Um, that's it. Any questions? So like, so for us at least, it's not so much that it's faster, it's more that um, it's sort of, you'd sort of, it's, um, we, we've, we essentially use it um, to process data to get it into the right format to generate graphs. Um, so that the graphs take a while to load isn't really that much of a problem. Um, the main problem is that, like, the whole, well, depending on browser, the whole browser or the whole tab sort of locks up while, while you're waiting. Um, so the main sort of issue for us is that. Um, so just the physical act of pushing it into a web worker fixes that. Um, it would also be faster, because, um, depending on depending on what you do, so um, Parallel.js fires up like four web workers by default, I think. So if you run something like map over it, it will run sort of that much faster. Um, depending on how complicated your objects are, there's also a cost in serializing it, um, which is probably worth bearing in mind. Yes. You just said parallel JS fires up four workers by default. Yes. Does, does it like distribute the map across all four workers at once? Yes. Yes. So, so you could get into like a race condition where you've operated on the array in one worker and also in the other change something. So, does it guard against that? Um, so the browser copies um, copies the raw JavaScript object um, into thread so that nothing is shared, which is why. Um, which is why you can't access anything. So what, what does it do? Does it like cleverly chunk the array up into, into quarters and then reassemble it when it returns it? Um, I've not really looked into the internals of Parallel.js. Um, I imagine so. It might just sort of loop through and pass each thing in turn into the worker. Um, like the basic web worker API is fairly simplistic, so it shouldn't be too hard. Yes. Is it, can you demo an app that uses it in practice? Um, not really, just the... <laughs> <laughs> no, um, just the um, small demos that we have here. And um, there's um, another similar small demo on the GitHub repository, but it's still pretty small. Um, secondary question then while we're talking. Do you think that the, the constraint of code sharing is actually, it kind of sounds like a useful one. I think it sounds to me like it's just making it obvious to people that they're not allowed to, that, you know, that Ember won't be available to get their web worker thread. Yeah, um, it may be worth changing the API to make it more obvious because at the moment you sort of just define it all in line. Um, 
Yeah, like I'm sort of used to doing it in, in functional languages where it's sort of not an issue because data isn't shared by default anyway and everything's sort of immutable by default anyway so you can just sort of share stuff and there's no sort of state to worry about. Um, yeah, there's probably there's probably some things that we can do. Um, web workers themselves have evolved a lot over the past few years. Though, so like the reason this is now possible when it sort of wasn't before was before web workers um, would only accept a path to a file, to a JavaScript file on the same subdomain, and they'd only execute that file. Um, they now accept. Um, raw fun um, raw functions, um, which means that you don't have to faff around with loads of extra files. Yeah, because that's how I think in the Ace editor it does the syntax highlighting at web worker yeah. by looking at the which right is file. Really awkward. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll go to um, so um, so um. You said that like like your, your your key use case is that you don't want to tie up basically like the UI thread. Yes. Um, but if you have four web workers, is it somehow throttled, or if it was doing enough work, would it would it still crash your your tab? Or? Um, we've not run into that issue yet. Um, like there's sort of two ways of solving it in the browser. Um, first way is like this with web workers. Um, the second way would then be to um, do all our work a bit at a time and then sort of um, send everything through a set timeout to give the UI thread enough time to update. Um, they sort of come to the same sort of thing in that the UI thread is then nice and responsive, but sort of one way is really awful and horrible. But you, like, you couldn't like have like, web workers like mining their coins and like crash your, your You could do, but so it'll probably be really slow because <laughs> it doesn't use the GPU and it doesn't use yeah, really. A6 and whatever. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, you can do that with web Just for the recording sake, can you just repeat the question for me so that we can... Uh, yeah, so the question was, can you call other <laughs> web workers within the web workers themselves? Um, yes, you can do that. Um, web workers let you do that, yeah, but yeah. it's not it's not by default built into M parallel. As far as I know, it's not built into Parallel JS, so it might be. Um, but at any rate, you can still spawn a new web worker because it's just sort of JavaScript. Yes. Do all browsers Um. I don't. Sorry. Uh, I think all the major recent browsers support it. Um. I've got a feeling I, uh, recent-ish versions of IE um, only support web workers via named files still, um, which sort of means that it's probably not going to work in recent-ish versions of IE. I'm not sure what IE 11 is like. Yeah, can I use says IE 10 up? Um, so, so parallel JS full, uh, provides fallback. Yeah, I've not actually tested out fallback, so I can't tell you whether it works properly or not. But it theoretically does. So, the application you're building, or the use cases you've been attacking, are for B two B a control audience, control browser. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a very limited um, audience at the moment, so. Things like IE8 or whatever don't really concern us that much. In the dummy category, I think the whole web worker is obviously there's progress being made, but not qualitatively. How, how, is this a, a rapid area of improvement that you expect to see 
you know, both the desktop and mobile platforms you know, make some big leaps in the next year? Or is um, it like WebWorks have been around for like a few years now. Yeah. So um, I think most of the most of the limitations um, are around sort of security and um, sort of data sharing, and they're there for a good reason. So um, I think mostly it's sort of better library support, um, and if that can be fleshed out better, then things will improve a lot faster.